Hello there. So, let's continue talking about what a representation is in quantum mechanics. I'm going to get immediately stuck in talking about three of the most important types of eigenvalue equation. The first one is known as the energy eigenvalue equation. And this is where we have the energy operator known as the Hamiltonian. And this makes this expression here the energy eigenvalue equation. So when the Hamiltonian operates on or acts on an energy eigen excuse me an energy eigenstate or eigenket or an energy ket then we're going to get back the same ket both with a multiplicative constant or scalar known as the energy eigenvalue of the particular state we're talking about and these then we can say are eigenstates or eigenkets or eigenvectors of the hamiltonian operator and as we said at the end of the last video that if our system begins in a state which is not an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian, an arbitrary quantum state, then what happens is the system has to decide what eigenstate it's in. It must become one of the eigenstates of the particular operator we're talking about. It collapses or projects onto that particular eigenstate and that allows us to have our eigenvalue equation. And the same thing happens with momentum. If we start with an arbitrary quantum state vector psi and we act on it with the momentum operator, the system must decide to be in an eigenstate of the momentum operator. It must collapse or project onto eigenstates of the momentum operator. This gives us the momentum eigenvalue equation. So the momentum operator p hat is a Hermitian operator of course and it's going to act on one of the eigenstates of the operator itself. It's going to give us back the same eigenstate or eigenket or eigenvector of the operator but with a multiplicative constant which of course is the real momentum eigenvalue of the particular eigenstate in question. And finally if you want to look at position we're going to need the Hermitian position operator. We're going to find that if we act with this operator on a generic or arbitrary quantum state vector, that quantum state vector must collapse or project onto the eigenstates of the position operator. Then we have our eigenvalue equation. When the position operator acts on one of its eigenstates, it'll give us back the same eigenstate but with a multiplicative constant, which in this case is going to be the real position eigenvalue. So we have a position eigenstate or eigenvector or eigenket associated with the position operator and we're going to get back the real position eigenvalue or the value of the position observable associated with the particular eigenstate in question. Now I'd like that you recall that eigenstates of Hermitian operators can be used as a basis for other states and this is because the eigenstates of Hermitian operators by definition are complete they are orthogonal in a mathematical sense and they can be normalized. So hopefully you followed my argument to this point. If so, you'll understand that three of the most important operators are those for position, for energy and momentum. And because all of those operators are, are Hermitian, that means the position eigenstates, the energy eigenstates and the momentum eigenstates can individually be taken in a linear combination to describe all of the generic quantum states in our Hilbert space. So hopefully you understand the logic to this point. And now I'm going to pose a question, hopefully, which will have you thinking, which hopefully will have you struggling in, in a bit so that we can pull all of this together. The question I pose is as follows. Let's think about the position eigenstates, the x sub n's. I'm wondering can the ket at x sub n's be used to represent the energy eigenstates or the momentum eigenstates? Can the energy eigenstates be used to represent those for position and momentum? Or could the momentum eigenstates be used to represent those of energy and position? So we've seen already, for example, the position eigenvalue equation. And we have our position eigenstates or eigenkets here. The question is, can I take a linear combination of these 
to represent, let's say, the energy eigenstates or the momentum eigenstates. What do you think? So the answer is as follows. Eigenstates of a quantum operator can be used as a basis or a representation for another quantum operator if the operators in question commute. So for, so for example, if you want to position eigenstates to be used as a representation for the energy eigenstates, you can do so if the position and energy operators commute. So let's look at the two operators in question. We have the energy eigenvalue equation here with our energy operator, the Hamiltonian, and we have the position eigenvalue equation here with our position operator. And the question is, does the Hamiltonian commute with the position operator? Or what does that even mean? So think back to your basic arithmetic. You know that multiplying a and b is the same thing as multiplying b and a. You know that adding a and b is the same thing as adding b and a. That is to say that the operations in this case, they commute. The order is important. They are invariant with respect to order. So the question is, do quantum operators commute? Does the order which you apply quantum operators matter? And to answer that question, we must invoke the commutator. And it's very straightforward. So mathematically, we write the commutator in this fashion here. So this is the commutator between the Hamiltonian and position operators. What we do is we use this as its operator, as its own operator, and we act on an arbitrary quantum state vector. So what we do is we, we apply the position operator first and then the energy operator, and we subtract from that, applying the energy operator first and then the position operator. And if the order of their application is invariant, then what's going to happen is we're going to get zero. And it said then that the two operators commute. However, if this is non-zero, then the order of their application is important and the order of the application is invariant, excuse me, is a factor for consideration when doing our quantum mechanical calculations. So to go back to my question, I asked, can we use the position eigenstates in a linear combination to represent the energy eigenstates. And we can do that if the position and energy operators commute. Now, I'm using position and energy simply as an example. It turns out, by the way, that we need to take the expectation value of the commutator. But that's not particularly important. Maybe a better example would be to talk about energy and momentum, because they certainly, their operators certainly commute. And this means we can have simultaneous eigenfunctions or eigenstates of both or we can know the energy and momentum eigenvalues at the same time. Perhaps I've jumped ahead with my language there. So let's take a quick step backwards. We're saying that eigenstates of a quantum operator can be used to form a basis or a representation for another quantum operator if the operators commute. So I can tell you, for example, that position and energy operators commute. That means we can use the position eigenstates as a basis for the energy eigenstates. In fact, they are the same thing. And it's 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 very it's a much and much as really. And the phrase we use is that we can have simultaneous eigenstates for both the position and energy operator. It's slightly excuse me, not position energy operator, the, the 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 momentum and the energy operator. And it's slightly more difficult with the Hamiltonian and the position operators because we need to take the expectation value. But nonetheless, the point still stands. So, that's all I've looked to get done in this particular video segment. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and visit universityphysicstutorials.com. Thanks.